All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about image thresholding in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll be able to see how we could go from this image here on the left to this image here on the right. Okay, so what is image thresholding? So image thresholding is an image processing technique and it converts parts or all of the image into binary. Okay, so here you can see on the right, binary pretty much means black and white. So in our case, it's gonna be zero or 255. So either of those two values. So why do we need image thresholding? So the reason why we may need it is for um, certain things like image segmentation, feature extraction or object detection, and it's pretty useful for a lot of pre-processing steps. So how does image thresholding work? Well, there's a couple of types presented in OpenCV. So um, one of the main ones here is called Thresh Binary. So what this one does is um, based on your value. So uh, this is your output image after being thresholded. That's what the DST here means. And then your input is the source. So if your input pixel is greater than whatever threshold you set, then the value will be your max value. So in this case, our max value is 255. Otherwise, it's gonna be zero. So for the inversion one, it's just gonna be the opposite. So um, these two values are pretty much swapped from this one. And then you have a thresh trunk hold or truncate. Uh, what this one is, so if the source is greater than the threshold, then it'll be the threshold value. Otherwise, it's gonna be the original pixel value. So Main difference here is that instead of max value, you actually just set it to your threshold. And then instead of zero, you're actually setting it to your actual original pixel value. And then you have thresh to zero here. So what this says is if your image pixel is greater than your threshold, then just set it to your original image pixel. Otherwise you let it be zero. And then this one here is just the inverse of this. So these two, um, lines here are switched. And here on the right, this is just a visual representation of what we just described here. So um, whichever way makes more sense to you, you could go with that. Me personally, I looking at the left here is enough for me, but um, you could take a look at this if you want a more visual understanding. So to kind of correlate it, you can see this, this one right here is your original signal. And then here you can see that you're either gonna be the max value or gonna be zero based on your threshold. Okay, and you can kind of follow the same thought process through the other ones. Okay, so how does it work? Um, a little bit more detail. Typically you need to choose a threshold value. So um, the, just depending on how you want to choose a threshold value, there's a lot of different ways. Um, but some of the more useful ones is you could plot a histogram like we have here and then based on the histogram, you could decide, you know, maybe how you want certain uh, groups of pixels or peaks to be split in half. So um, we'll kind of see more in detail how that influences the results. So a potential value here is where the peak split and obviously where the peak split could be uh, defined differently, but in the example that we'll be talking about today, we'll kind of choose somewhere right where it dips so that, you know, the two peaks are kind of exactly separated somewhere in the middle. And we'll see how the results for that turn out. Okay, so let's jump straight into the coding. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import some of the main things we need. So import CV2 as CV, and then import numpy as MP, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and then import my OS for file reading. So we're gonna go ahead and create our threshold function call it thresholding, and then our if name equals uh, main. Okay, so this will call our main threshold function. And inside our threshold function, let's go ahead and do some of our image reading. So we're gonna read our image. We have root equals um, os.get cwd. And then we're gonna have our image path. It's gonna be os.path.join. Uh, and then we'll pass in our roots and we put it in demo images. 
And then our file is called tessa.jpg. Okay, so that's our picture. And here we're going to go ahead and read it. So cv.umread and then pass in the path. And then next up is we're going to convert it to grayscale because a lot of times um, thresholding is done in grayscale. So here we have cv. Um, CVT color. We could have also read it as gray, um, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. So cv.color and then bgr to gray. Okay, so now we have our grayscale image. So let's go ahead and take a look at our histogram. So we have his equals cv.calchist. Uh, and then we're going to pass in our gray image here. So after we pass in our gray image, let's go ahead and pass in zero, none, and then 256. And we'll go between zero and 256. Okay, so I have a histogram video if you wanna check it out for more details of this. But here I won't go too much into detail because I covered it already. So let's go ahead and plot our figure. So we have plt.figure and then plt.plot and then hist. And then plt dot, let's go ahead and label our axes. So we have our x label and our y label. So um, our y is going to be number of pixels. And let's go ahead and show, oops, let's go ahead and show our plot. So if I run this, we should see the histogram plot like we saw earlier. Okay, there we go, that's our histogram plot. So again, we're gonna choose a value somewhere here so that I kinda wanna have these two peaks split in between since those two seem to be the major peaks. So let's go ahead and see how the different thresholding type behaviors will um, change our results. So let's go ahead and create a list called um, thresh opt, like thresh options. So to see the possible options, you type cv dot and then thresh, you can see the different options show up. So you have cv dot thresh binary, you have cv dot thresh. The other one I'm going to do is binary in inverted. We have cv dot thresh. The other one is two zero. And then we have cv dot thresh. You have two zero inverted. And then lastly, we have cv dot thresh um, truncated. Okay, so those are our options. And let's go ahead and create a list for the names. So I'm gonna call this thresh names, just so when we plot it, um, we're gonna know what we're plotting. So we have binary, binary, um, inverted. We have a two zero, and then we have a two zero inverted, and then we have a trunk, truncated. Okay, so those are our different options. And then let's go ahead and put this in a for loop to plot everything. So let's make a new figure and then plt dot subplot for the first one. We're gonna make two rows, three columns. And then for the first image will be our grayscale. So plt dot um show. And then we have our grayscale image and then C map is gonna be gray. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do a quick show to see our pretty image. So if I run this, um, our histogram pops up here, right? And then we have our image that we're working with. Okay, so let's go ahead and start thresholding. So we're gonna put everything in a for loop. So for i in range, and then we have the length of our um, threshold options here. So because we have our subplot, the first one is taken, and we want to um, plot after the first one, we're gonna do two, three, and then it's gonna be i plus two, because it's indexed from one, so we need to increment two to start with the second subplot. And then from here we have plt, or we're going to use a threshold function. So this is the main function in this video here that's new. So we have our cv dot, uh, threshold, and then we pass in our gray image here. And this is a threshold value. So we're gonna choose somewhere around 70, which is where the dip was that we said. And then our max value, we're gonna be 255 because that's the range we're dealing with. And then our thresh option is the options that we created in our list. So that way you can see all the different options. So if I go ahead and do plt.show, 
it's going to be my image uh, threshold. So notice here that um, the threshold is going to return uh, the return value and the final image. I don't care about the return value right now because um, we're going to assume that everything is working. So that's why I have this little line here that I'm just essentially ignoring the return value. So I'm going to pass um, pass in my image threshold to my um, show and then go ahead and uh, make sure it's uh, gray for the C map and just add in our title here. So call this uh, thresh names, pass in I, and that should be all. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see our different threshold types and we could take a better look at what's going on. So that's our histogram plot that we don't need right now. So close it out. And we can see here, this is our original image, our binary. So you can see it did a pretty good job getting most of the background away. And you can see the car is in blue. So we kind of separated the foreground and background. And you can see here the binary inverted is just these two images inverted as expected. And then to zero, you can see that um, we're kind of focusing in on the car to be the dark, whereas to zero inverted, we're focusing on the background being um, dark. And you can see this has like kind of cool metallic look. And then you can see the truncated, um, it gets kind of more of the background washed out. And then you can see the car is kind of the main focus. Okay, so um, depending on different um, applications, you may want to play around with different thresholding options and thresholding values and see what works best for you. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.